Hello, <laughs> my name is uh, Dominic Chen. Uh, what I do is right now I run a venture company called uh, Dividual.inc. Mm -hmm. And uh, I run a service called uh, Rigureto, which I presented in my, uh, in my talk. And besides that, I also work as activist of the Creative Commons movement um, in, a, in a branch in Japan. Let's yeah. follow up a little bit on this website you were presenting that your company is currently okay. developing. Um, what does it do? Well, uh, actually, it's a place you can share your feelings, uh, not just mere facts, but your feelings and get better. Uh, so every time you feel blue, you go there and share your uh, share why you, you feel blue to, to the other users. And the other users come up, you know, instantly to uh, cheer you up. And then you send thanks to them. And all this is happening anonym anonymously, so you, you don't have to worry about uh, you know, your privacy or anything like that, because no one can tell who you are. Because we, we had several topics today, and, and one of them was if, if, if this kind of like networking is really bringing people together in a way, and mm -hmm. also if it's, if mm -hmm. there should be a more critical approach. Mm -hmm. Would you say that your website or your portal is basically uh, the counterproof that this is possible? Uh, sure, I think so. Um, and also, there was a talk about locality, and I think uh, locality has a lot to do with that service, uh, especially here in Japan, uh, because anonymity is one value in Japanese internet culture, not like uh, in the US, mm -hmm. where anonymity is considered as you know, the symbol of uh, cowardness, or you know, the dark side of the internet. But here in Japan, uh, anonymity is one you know, very positive drive that um, accelerate the culture on the, on the internet. But on the other hand, I mean, the other project you showed, the typewriter that basically mm -hmm. remembers everything the types, even if you don't know what the name is of the person, mm -hmm. I think you called it um, ephemeral data. You will gather tons of even of this just unknown IP or unknown ID in your mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. um, you can gather mood swings. You can analyze. It's actually the same in the writing. You also explained that the writing can create. Uh, so if you have a certain mood, you write differently, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, isn't it basically? I mean, if you if you're a Creative Commons activist, I, I doubt it. But isn't it possible just to uh, mine this data too, if even there's no name attached to it? Uh, are you asking if it's possible? Yeah, well, because of you course, just, yeah. of course, it's possible. Uh, so actually, it's my 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 talk today was about this ambivalence also of this uh, human condition um, placed in the middle in, in 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 the middle way of you know anonymity and this very specific identity. But also, I think there's a th third way to uh, resolve that antagonism, which is the uh, multiple identities. Uh, which is also covered by the OpenID standard, uh, where, where you can choose uh, your multiple uh, persona depending on the context you're, you know, uh, mm -hmm. participating in. So um, I think all the technical problems could be resolved, and I think at the end of the day, the question is, uh, what what culture is it emanating from? Is it that community, that service, that function. Uh, I don't think you can just, you know, take one idea, or one technology from one place to another and say, that, you know, uh, say you, you, you can bring that same thing everywhere in the world. Uh, there needs to be this cultural interpretation or localization uh, everywhere. And that's happening also in a context of Creative Commons, where this very idea of the Creative Commons license uh, is a very European one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know what I mean. And it's not going well with this kind of uh, more natural oriented uh, idea of culture here in Japan, for instance, because people don't like to act, you know, very formally, but uh, um, they, they, people, people prefer to uh, let, let the whole communication flow and not define or, you know, put in one place. So there are um, many cultural things. You were actually things. making a bigger step at the end of your talk. Mm -hmm. We said that by showing a website that, that sort of measures the mind activity that this might be, if I understood you properly, one way to really reinterpret 
creativity and you and also like the individuals or swarm mm -hmm. involved in it. Can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit about that? Well, it's not a website, it's a new technology, it's a ah. new hardware technology. Well, it's not even commercialized, uh, it's still in the lab in ATR. All right, uh, yeah. You can Google ATR, uh, image reconstruction, and you can find that <laughs> paper. Uh, well, basically, well, it's it's only having a 10 by 10 pixel resolution right now, so you, you can you know you can only reconstruct A, a B, U, C. So it's it's meaningless uh, right now. Uh, my point was, if that kind of technology in the coming 20 years or 30 years from now on uh, would evolve and be commodized in, inside our everyday life. Um, you know, there wouldn't be any anything that prevent that from uh, helping our everyday creation or expression, and people would use that, of course, for good intention and bad intention. You can do the whole simulation of how criminal activity could be used for that kind of technology. But at the end of the day, I think the whole point uh, that would be revealed by that technology is that uh, is that your your learning and construction uh, of your body and mind never stops at any moment of your life. And also Professor Fujihata was mentioning about you can't mix uh, the self-loop, self-feedback of inside one individual and interaction between two individuals. But um, I don't think there is such a thing as a very you know, lonesome feedback because as long as, you, as long as you have this body connected to the real world, uh, there isn't any moment uh, that you're really alone in this world, or maybe disconnected, yes, mm. uh, but you can't d disconnect your uh, you know, sensitive organs uh, like you disconnect from the internet. Uh, so you're in a constant interaction with others or the environment or anything. So. So this whole new idea of individuals, uh, it's, it's, it's not such you know, rigid border, uh, like a shell or something, but it's more um, permissive, it's more um, uh, transparent or lucid, and, and the border could be you know, connected or coupled with other individuals. And, 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 and by being able to represent it as, a, as images or sort of like flowing data, mm -hmm. would that transgress beyond the individual because it can sort of like then sort mindsets or how would that be possible then? Uh, well, from here we, we really have to go into this kind of science fictional imagination uh, working. Uh, but yes, uh, maybe you can think of something like a, you know, a, a hub brain. Like, let's say you are a very famous, you know, brain, brain to computer interaction artist. So everyone Which connects I am. to your brain. <laughs> <laughs> or you are. Sorry. Well, my brain. I'm still working on this USB interface. Which <laughs> <laughs> bigger. It's like, mm, okay. Okay. Data okay. So you. Well, my huge stomach. You're the specialist, okay, sorry. No, no, no I'm just, uh, <laughs> of course I am, but I'm just kidding anyway. <laughs> anyway, but uh, you, you could be connected to, you know, thousands of other people watching your visual uh, happening in your mind because you have a very interesting way to work inside your brain. So that's one thing you can imagine of. Uh, and then I could sort of like maybe measure the hive of the people kind of like swarming like us. Yeah. Then, yeah. 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 Or, or, or just maybe you could uh, exchange dreams, different people. But it, anyway, those applications yeah. you, you can you can think of them like you know in a, in a thousand ways. But uh, the, the whole point is again, uh, the resolution of technology to observe into our you know process of creation of just existence. Uh, could change our uh, epistemological situation of the world, of how we perceive the world, of course. And maybe that would be the next uh, you know, uh, revolution after the internet, or who knows. And change what this we might then be. Exactly, or I. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you.